Antarctica is known as the White Continent at the bottom of the world. And I joined a photography expedition, but I actually learned a lot of weird stories whilst I was there, including how a guy hid a penguin in his shower. And the truth is, the penguins are so chill, you could just pick one up. Fortunately, our workshop leader didn't fall for the irresistible temptation of picking one up. Join me for the rest of my photography expedition and I'll uncover all the wacky stories I learnt. Also, these photos are available as fine art prints. Today, we're going to land on a penguin colony at Port Charcot. First, we have to step into this pink liquid. We can't touch anything or put anything on the ground on Antarctica, except our boots. So we have to step into disinfectant to reduce the risk of spreading avian flu. As soon as we land, the penguins greet us. These are Gen 2 penguins, and they walk down the penguin highway, which is a track that has been compacted by the penguins. This was actually my favourite location on my trip to Antarctica. It was a very busy penguin colony, and there were also several fur seals. It was so cute watching them roll in the snow. Okay, first weird story, well it's actually a fact, is that chinstrap penguins sleep 10,000 times a day for about four seconds each time. Well, scientists have actually found that they do this and they will accumulate 11 hours of sleep. And this allows them to stay alert when there are predators around like skewers who might predate on their chicks. Cool, right? It is day five on our Antarctica expedition and I haven't really vlogged the past couple of days because I've just been so focused on photography and it has been so nice. It's been a long time since I've just focused on photos and not thought about vlogging and the wildlife has been absolutely incredible. We've seen so much. from leopard seals, humpback whales, thousands of penguins, incredible landscapes. Honestly, Antarctica is a photographer's paradise. It's absolutely stunning. The wildlife is incredible. It might be a paradise, but the wildlife is not always safe. Let me take this moment to share the story of how a penguin was stolen on a cruise boat. One of our expedition leaders told us that a guest on board another cruise kept repeatedly picking up penguins. They told him to stop, then they got back on the boat and a couple of days later, they could hear sounds from the guest's room. Turns out the guest had put the penguin in his rucksack and left it in the shower. The penguin was returned immediately, but honestly, <laughs> why? This morning we're going out onto the zodiacs. We're on plan B after some weather has deterred us doing plan A, and now we've got a slightly different plan. But apparently this place was booked up by another ship and now it was freed up. So our expedition took this opportunity. This is the best place for leopard seals and potentially hunting leopard seals. We're not doing any landings today but we'll have to see what happens when we get out there. I can see one of the expedition leaders, I think it's Marcos, yeah. And they've all got binoculars and they're currently scouting out locations. I actually think I can see a seal. Yeah, that's a seal. As someone who is passionate about the natural world, it is quite easy for me to become anxious by the news. At university, I actually developed something called eco-anxiety. I know, it's a bit weird, but simply put, it's an anxiety or concern 
over our changing and struggling natural world. For me, it can cause feelings of sadness, staleness, and a what's the point kind of feeling. Recently, I actually felt some eco-anxiety because I learned that avian bird flu has arrived to sub-Antarctica and that could be detrimental to wildlife populations on Antarctica. Sometimes I've ignored the news, but I think I'm more helpful if I'm aware. And what really helps me is connecting with nature, being outside, being immersed and connected to the natural world. But also sometimes you just need someone to talk to. And this video is in paid partnership with BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a credentialed therapist who is trained to listen and provide unbiased advice. Starting therapy can be difficult. Maybe you don't have access to a therapist near you. And BetterHelp therapy sessions can be over the phone or even messaging if you prefer. To get started, you can fill out a questionnaire to assess your specific needs. Then you'll get matched with your therapist, in most cases within 48 hours. You can easily switch to a new therapist if your first therapist doesn't fit you. And there's no extra cost. You can schedule your sessions at a time that's best for you. I'd recommend being in a comfortable place and for me it's the forest. Four million people have used BetterHelp and you can get 10% of your first month by clicking the link in the description or heading to betterhelp.com slash Danny Connell. Leopard seals are known to be massive and fearless. They've even attacked Zodiac boats before, so I was really excited to find one. It was tricky navigating through the brash ice, but then we found an insane leopard seal. It was half blind, with one eye completely lifeless. The seal was massive, and clearly feeding fine. We've just got back on the boat and our Zodiac cruise was crazy we found a leopard seal and it actually yawned right in front of us. And seeing a leopard seal's teeth was crazy. Their teeth look pretty much the same as shark teeth and I guess it's down to convergent evolution. So they've both evolved teeth that rip and tear their prey. Such a crazy setting. Something that I discovered that is like this hidden secret that no one talks about is that the lifeline of Antarctica is literally being stolen. As you can see, not much lives on Antarctica, except penguins and mammals. There's no trees or insects, but in the sea, there are millions of krill. 96% of species feed on krill in Antarctica, and these massive super trawlers legally fish the krill, literally in the middle of a hundred whales feeding. And penguins and mammals get stuck in the nets, but there are no laws to prevent these gigantic trawlers going in the middle of whales. Sea Shepherd have been working hard to prevent the krill catch quote from increasing and I supported their campaign by buying a t-shirt. Our expedition team makes sure we are being as careful as possible when we land or go in zodiacs. We're limited to landing for only an hour so we do plenty of photography from the boat. That evening we had a fun barbecue and the conditions were perfect and still. It was still very cold to be eating outside. The sunset was beautiful. Antarctica is a photographer's paradise. Incredible wildlife, massive icebergs, and epic landscapes. There's so much history here, and its remoteness and extremely cold and dark winters mean there is no population on Antarctica. Surprisingly though, 11 babies have been born on Antarctica. We continue to cruise the La Mer Channel. We've now passed the middle point of our journey. After not seeing many seals on ice, 
during the first half of the journey, this Zodiac cruise was full of seals. Another leopard seal. Look at that menacing smile. The wildlife in Antarctica is very relaxed, but to avoid disturbance, we only spend 10 minutes or so with each seal before moving away. They usually don't even look at us, but it was so nice to see this very active Weddell seal. Weddell seals also sound super cool. Antarctica blew my mind, and the landscape is incredible. It's hard to show the scale of the mountains and icebergs, but that there is a zodiac boat next to the iceberg. We've just arrived to Deception Island and there's no more snow. <laughs> I felt quite sad to look outside and there's no snow. But the landscape is incredible. It's super dark and rugged. The cloudy weather is perfect for this location. This island was used for whaling I believe between 1910 and 1918. We saw one photo and there must have been around 30 whaling ships and they were killing hundreds, thousands of whales. To this day, whales still haven't fully recovered because they have such long life histories and there are remnants of the whaling industry on the beach and there's some huts and and I even saw some whale bones between some fur seals that were fighting. It looks really moody and dark out there. Last night I was really worried about getting seasick because I went to bed around 10, 10 30 at night and the boat started to really rock and we were expecting high winds and I woke up a few times at night with the boat rocking but I wasn't ill at all I didn't feel any motion sickness and I had a great night's sleep so maybe I'm getting my sea legs <laughs> I think it's time for some breakfast and some coffee another absolutely wild fact I learnt in Antarctica is that Antarctica is covered in volcanoes. Many are under the ice, but there are actually two active volcanoes, and one is here. We landed on Telephon Bay to have a look. Fortunately, the volcano hasn't erupted since 1967, and there isn't much life here, unsurprisingly but we did find a fur seal relaxing on the beach. In the afternoon, we landed on Half Moon Island. Since it was so bright, I didn't take many photos and just focused on videos. The fur seals were play fighting, there was a random elephant seal relaxing, and the penguins were super clumsy on the rocky beach.
It was great fun to watch. At the time, we didn't realise that this was going to be our last landing on the trip. When we got onto the boat, it was announced we might not be able to leave Antarctica as scheduled. But we had to wait a day to see what would happen. This morning we couldn't land because of 40, 50 knot winds and the boat is really starting to rock and it's quite hilarious. They've put sick bags all over the boat and I'm starting to feel it a little bit. <laughs> the day was spent on the boat and it was still uncertain when we would be able to leave. This morning we were told we couldn't fly out of Antarctica for at least three or four days or the fourth day was going to be risky and potentially we could get stuck that day. So they basically made the immediate decision to cross the Drake Passage. If you didn't know, Drake Passage is the body of water between South America and Antarctica and it's known to be one of the most dangerous bodies of water where many boats have disappeared and sunk. And it's hour seven into roughly 48 hours. After an hour, I started to feel a bit of motion sickness. So I took a tablet and I've been a zombie since then. I've had three naps, still more than 24 hours of this. That evening, I was feeling a little bit more alive and we had a presentation about how the expedition team helped advise the animators for the movie Happy Feet. The second day on the Drake Passage and I realised I wasn't actually seasick. I just had a very strong reaction to the medication. It's a bit windy. <laughs> I was absolutely fine the rest of the crossing. I was even able to get on with some editing. We had a very relaxed Drake passage and we experienced a bit of pitching and rolling. It was finally time to leave, and we have returned to Chile. Everyone was quite sad to leave, and I think I would be, but I was so excited for the next adventure. Remember, if you'd like to order fine art prints featured in this video, they're available for one week. Thanks for watching. Bye!